Student Nurse World Headquarters. David Eric on guitar. Um, and uh, we thought it might be of interest to uh, do a uh, rig rundown. Got a uh, beautiful uh, Fender Jaguar. How yep. long have you owned this? Uh, less than a year. This is a used uh, Cobain version which has the Cobain touches purportedly because it's something he found cheap but it's got the two DiMarzio pickups and then uh, just one tone knob so your pickups are here. This, it's really difficult to manipulate these knobs which is the the downside everybody finds in this and I think even Kurt eventually decided to go to something more simple uh, do, they, do they actually get in the way of the whammy bar? Or? They get, they, everything's in the way of everything. <laughs> <laughs> but, you've, um, but you've got this lovely uh, Jaguar third circuit rhythm circuit up here. So to to count them, uh, they, I I have never owned one, but I, I I was my friend Jeff a long long time ago had a '70s one, and I was fascinated with all the knobs and thought that was cool. But we've got a switch two rotating knobs, another three-way switch here, uh, another... That switch is, is gone. Is gone. In the in the Cobain version, he just liked it with a simple uh, toggle switch. Right. Um, so you got the rhythm circuit here. Put a little blues driver on it. And then you've got the... And then you push it down here, and then you've got these two circuits. So this would be the... Uh, neck, bridge, bow. So, and the DeMarcios are pretty hot pickups. In practice, and by in practice, I mean when you're actually playing live on stage, how many of those uh, bells and whistles, knobs and buttons do you actually use? What, uh, I what has utility? I am now experienced enough with this guitar to use all of them. Whether I use them all fluently is another question. Uh -huh. uh, but there's especially one song um, uh, that we're playing now that Helena wrote that needs a softer touch. And then you and I both kind of play this beginning chord. Yeah. Muted, and then I can boost it up with just that switch there. Gotcha. And that's that's been the so is is that switch that that's the single most useful, or which is the yeah. Right I there. mean, aside from going from the, say the um, the every you might use this when you go to the bridge pickup for your more punctuated leads. Uh -huh. You're coming out of that guitar through a wireless system. How do you like what? What is the wireless system? And the wireless system just keeps me from tripping on cords. Right, but what? Who who makes it? And are oh, you, are you happy with it? Oh yeah, both uh, Helena got this, and it's by Nux. N U. Increasing sign X or decreasing sign. Uh huh. And uh, this thing charges it up, which means that you can. Um, leave it in the case, turn it on, uh, or you can take it and plug it in. I have the plug at home. So before a gig, I'll plug it all in and make sure it's all fresh. Has, uh, it, has it ever let you down? No. But I do keep a cord handy. Yeah. Um, it, Emergency cable. Yeah, we, have, we haven't had a gig that was long enough for that to wear out. Um, and of course, it's a battery, so eventually it'll wear out on its own. Um, Okay, so out of the guitar, into the wireless, uh, I see that's going into the gold box. What do you got there? So we got a Morning Glory, um, um, I guess you'd just call it a, um, what is it, a genre of pedal that just adds a little something extra and you can play with lots of other pedals, so you put it on the front. It This, this particular version came with the extra um, button, which means I can add a little extra boost to the boost. Uh -huh. Oh, I gotta turn it on. There we go. So this is this is just. Oh, look at that. The the LED actually has two levels, so you know where you are. So nice little theoretically. This, this is just playing through a compressor. 
There's a little gain boost. And then here's a little more in case you need some more extra. All right. And, um, and then um, we ha I have a clon here that my friend, our friend uh, Bud, who uh, runs a pedal company called Chasing Tone. And Bud takes a lot of the classic pedals, some discontinued pedals, and reworks them, but always with the finest of materials. And so, you know, if you're a pedal aficionado, the Klon is uh, is you know four hundred to two thousand dollar pedal. Um, this one um, is combined with the Tube Squeezer, another classic pedal. So you can use the Klon as your initial boost too. Nice little edge to it. It does. That's that's nice and, sounding. And then if you add the tube squeezer, it gets even just slightly more sustained, slightly more kind of punctures something in. And then a favorite combo of mine is to go with the Klon and then the blues driver. At full volume, which is you know, which we're trying to run these tubes, so we're, we're basically at the edge of their abilities. Um, and this this is the Music Man um, 21065, a really nice shape. It was a um, what do you call it? A storage unit find. Oh yeah. And uh, I haven't done anything to it except new tubes. Even I don't think we even put a new tube in, and we kind of looked around. The, the latest amp or the latest amp is gonna it's costing me a million dollars to fix, but um, so it is when you get it for almost free. So uh, typically the Morning Glory Blues Driver is a good combo for me, and then the Trouble Boost for lead, and that's another one of Bud's pedals. <coughs> Just a straight up Treble Boost, nothing too tricky about it. Occasionally come in with the copy, the carbon copy. We're playing a little uh, ska tune. And that carbon copy is nice. And then lately, despite everybody's insistence that I stay away from flangers, I got into this Dino My Roto, which, Dino My Roto. <laughs> which has uh, three settings. In the middle setting, it emulates that you're in a, a Hammond B, so you can hear it. I rather like that. And, the, and nobody thinks I'm playing a flanger. Um, what, what do you use that on? I'm using that one on um, um, the new one. Um, what? White River. Okay. Uh, under the pavement, that is. Um, and you've got a volume pedal. Oh, yeah, under the pavement. And then I use it at the end of uh, White River. For the, the, the volume pedal, the way you use it, it's. I do, you, do you actually adjust during only in the uh, only in that uh, song we were talking about where we get, where I get into the big vibrato? That's that's a vibrato in the end. Okay, so you do some swells. What like is that, that song again? Uh, Under the pavement. This? No, this is the one where. It's meant to feedback a ton. So, and of course with the Jaguar you get the added addition you get to play up here. I think the last 
past three months have been the, the most stability you've had on your pedal board. You went through a lot of stuff. Yeah, the, there was some general complaining going on about my pedal management. Was there So part of the goal was to simplify it. Um, and part of the goal was to dial in some of the settings so that they didn't vary, uh, even though the the venue will screw everything up. But as far as uh, as 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 far we we went into the studio and we played in front uh, toward a, a, a well actually Bud came by and he we hired him to come in to dial some of these in and make sure that they were balanced and scooped, and also to make sure that Helena and I weren't. Uh, stepping on each other's pedal toes and so her board includes some real classics the OCD and the rat which I also own an OCD and I just bought a rat but it's it's that's more for my enjoyment if, I, if both of us played the rat we would sound like a bad metal band I think did you did you get any that you remember that uh, you, you tried and they just didn't do the job and you, you unloaded them. Well, the first pedal I got was this uh, was a sustained compressor pa pedal, which I still have on my home board. But the second pedal I got was the Big Muff, and nothing sounds cooler than a Big Muff except there was so much noise associated with that pedal. It just in a space like this it just drove everybody nuts. That, that actually was the first pedal I ever owned. <laughs> it it well. may be the only pedal you need, um, although some people would say that about the Rat. It's hard to live without a blues driver. Tuner permanently on. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't switch it so it turns the sound off. I use the pedal to turn the sound off uh -huh. if I'm going to tune up. And and the amp has a, you have a little bit of reverb dialed in. Um, always reverb is up to seven, seven and eight, and then everything else is uh, a little bit more bass because this has a lot of sharpness to it. But everything else is at five. Uh huh. And then the. Um, there's a you know intensity and speed of the vibrato which you can vary. Mm -hmm. 